Harry and Meghan just announced two new series in production this year. Thank you, God. Well, I'm delighted for obvious reasons, because as you know, fans of the show, uh, I love everything Harry and Meghan have ever done. I think uh, Meghan's podcast, Archetypes, was the greatest podcast I've ever listened to. Why are black women so loud? Why are black women so mean? And why are black women so angry? Uh, Harry's book, Spare, was the greatest novel I've ever read. How did it get so dark so fast? I love the other things they've done on Netflix there. Harry and Meghan show, uh, where they spoke about how terrible their life was over six episodes, uh, with epic car chases included. Uh, I love Invictus Games. I love the other Netflix thing they did about Nelson Mandela or whatever that was, racism and stuff. This was inspired by Nelson Mandela. And when I say I love all of these things that they do, it, I, I'm being genuine. The reason I love them is because, of course, they are all terrible, right? But there's something amazing to me about how tribal the world is, that everyone forms into two, everyone gets into two groups. They're either the people that hate Harry and Meghan or the people that love them, and uh, they go to war, and somehow these two people are getting millions and millions of dollars thrown at them, despite not having any discernible talents or gifts of any kind. Uh, they are no good at speaking in public. They are no good at doing anything. They're making jam now. I bet that's shit as well. How many of us feel battered, helpless, in the face of the seemingly endless stream of disasters and devastation? But having said all that, and this is something I've said in previous videos, You've got to have a bit of fun with this, okay? Uh, people who actually despise, detest, they have like a visceral reaction, a visceral hatred of Harry and Meghan, those people are just as insane as the people that love them, you know, the Sussex squaddies and all those kinds of people that they talk about that have come after me from time to time. Uh, it's, uh, it's insane, okay? You need to calm down, take a step back. What's the worst that you can actually say about Harry and Meghan? Harry, what? He's a somewhat morally loose simpleton. And Meghan is a somewhat shameless social climber. But honestly, if you hate them, you are living parasocially, right? You're not, you're not living in the real world anymore, or you're faking it. Because, I don't know, get out more. Have you not met worse people in your life? I, I certainly have. Uh, people that worry me more. People I actually know, right? Uh, they, the only thing that attracts me to them, uh, the only thing that grabs my attention is just how incre <laughs> incredibly sort of undeserving they are of all the opportunities they keep getting. But I find that hilarious. There are loads of people in the world that are uh, being, you know, sons of whoever or daughters of whoever who get you know, through nepotism opportunities that the rest of us don't. Whatever. You know, that really uh, doesn't bother me. So chill out, all right? Chill out. Let's get into the show. Who's Daniel Boland? Oh, Daniel Boland, this is a heavy hitter. Do you guys know who this is? Harry and Meghan are at it again. Archwell Productions just announced two new non-fiction series in production as part of its multi-year overall deal with Netflix. Youth hosteling with Chris Eubank. The first series is curated by Meghan, the Duchess of Sussex, and celebrates the joys of cooking, gardening, entertainment, and friendship. Cooking? These are the types of foods I would eat. Tamales, gormasabzi, larb, matzo ball soup, adobo. And today I'm cooking with Meghan Markle, the star of the hit TV show Suits and the founder of the lifestyle blog The Pig. So today we're making toast, a very fancy version of toast. <laughs> yes, but it doesn't have to feel overwhelming. Friendship? Sophie has become a dear friend and someone who I think is so emblematic of strength that comes from embracing your humanity, even in the face of all these family and home and public pressures. I understand. So that's the one series they've got lined up, all about the joys of, uh, what was it, cooking, gardening, entertaining, and friendship. So uh, something uh, with Megan, where she's cooking some potentially overwhelmingly fancy toast 
with friends and doing a spot of gardening or something. That sounds amazing. What about the other series, you're all asking? The second series offers unprecedented access to the world of professional polo. Program offering unprecedented access to the world of professional polo. Now, my only concern as a Netflix executive might be um, that there could be a reason that it's unprecedented, that it's never been done before. You know, I don't know, but it might be that nobody wants to see that. Shot primarily at the US Open Polo Championship in Wellington, Florida. The series will pull back the curtain on the sport known primarily for its aesthetic and social scene, capturing the full story of what it takes to compete at the highest level. Ooh, I can't wait for them to pull back that curtain. Uh, can you imagine uh, what that's going to be like when they pull that curtain back? All hell's going to break loose. We're going to discover a bunch of uh, intensely private, <laughs> uh, very posh people who ride horses. So that's going to be that's going to be something else. Anyway, to uh, end today's video, I found a little clip of Harry that I hadn't seen before, giving a little talk about his uh, African adventures again, and how much he loves Africa and stuff. And uh, <laughs> I think it just kind of uh, represents what I love most about Harry and Meghan. There, uh, <laughs> uh, you'll see. There is Africa's in my heart. Africa's in my soul. Now, I don't mean to nitpick, but uh, it does kind of bother me when people talk about how much they love Africa. Africa's in my heart, right? Uh, when they don't actually mean Africa, do they? They don't mean uh, the swamps teeming with human feces in Lagos. They don't mean the ghettos of Kinshasa. They mean a nice nature reserve in Botswana. Yeah, that's in my heart too. Um, I first went there when I was 12, 13 years old. And after so many years, I wanted to give back to it because it had given me so much. Um, the vast open space, the cultures, the communities, the people, the, the wildlife, just the, the freedom um, was, a, was a huge piece uh, of why I loved Africa so much. Freedom! And we call it Centibali. In Sasutu, the local language, it means forget me not. And it's really focused on ensuring that the younger generation are quite literally not forgotten. <laughs> quite literally. Yeah, those Africans are always forgetting their kids. <laughs> I don't know what that means. I guess it's figurative, not literal. Um, both Prince Seto's mother and my mother had a, a strong focus on HIV and AIDS, but also of the younger generation, because it's their futures that are being stolen from them. And at the heart of Centre Bali, what we've always believed um, is that every single young person should have a chance at a better future. Mm, I remembered that clip funnier than it actually was. <laughs> I always just assume I can react to anything, you know. I'm a right little reaction weasel. <laughs> well, this is one trap I can't weasel my way out of when Harry starts talking about kids with HIV. There's no, there's no comedy there. Anyway, if you've enjoyed the video up to now, uh, give it a like, tell me what you think in the comments, and uh, share this everywhere. Share it all over your social media. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And uh, I'm gonna leave you with a clip here today of uh, my request for the first guest on Megan's cooking gardening uh, program, all right? Uh, let's see if you can guess who it is. Oh, and by the way, if you want access to some exclusive videos that I'm making on Patreon, we've got another one coming out tomorrow. Uh, I think there's about seven or eight up there already, and many more to come. Uh, so if you want to help out with the channel, you can uh, take a look at that. The link's in the description. I'll leave you with, uh, with Sophie G. Because I have heard my fellow human beings and friends here today sing. This is not planned, trust me. I'm going to step up, yes, and I'm going to sing you a song that I wrote for my daughter, Ella Grace, at a moment where I was going through a difficult time and where I remind myself of all the hope that there is in one's life and all the hope that there is in love and helping out each other. And it's called Smile Back at Me, and it goes like this. Some people doubt mm -hmm, that angels can fly. Mm -hmm. The worst part was when they closed their eyes.